Hello everybody. Um, I'm continuing the topic of the for loops and I am uh, going to work on the same example that we uh, were discussing last time. Um, and actually I'm going to uh, add a level uh, of complexity to the um, uh, the exercise that we were working on, which is uh, calculating the friction factor uh, for different values of Reynolds number, which we uh, put here. Um, and we saw that last time when we did the run that we were able to plot the um, uh, Reynolds number, uh, I, mean, I mean the friction factor versus Reynolds number, and we compared this to what we saw in the Moody diagram, and we found that we are getting the same results. Um, just to make sure that the Moody diagram is here, uh, so we can compare it to what we are doing. So this is Moody diagram, and we 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 made sure that everything is right. But as you see, the Moody diagram contains a lot of lines, and each line stands for one uh, value of epsilon over d, which we see here. Uh, and the ranges, uh, uh, the value of epsilon over d ranges from 10 to the minus 5, from here up to 10 to the minus 2. Uh, so the range is high actually, and uh, that's why we have um, many lines here. So what we are thinking, or I'm thinking to do now, is to uh, plot many lines, not just one line. So if you're thinking of, of doing this process many times, then I need to have a for loop that contains this for loop. And to do this, um, this of course will, will require some edits to the code and to adding something more to um, help us do what we're trying to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is to put for epsilon over d equals, um, uh, I'll just put this side by side so we can pick any values. I put uh, 0 0.0001, uh, 0 0.0002, uh, 0 0.0004, 0 0.0006, 0 0.0008, um, and um, I pick any far value 0 0.002. For this, I'm just just picking any random numbers. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six values of epsilon over d. Um, um, and we we need to get these uh, shifted to the right a little bit. So you just um, choose them and then click tab and it's automatically moving them to the right and I'm just writing the end I'm, I'm not done but I'm, I'm just writing this to um, to know where is the beginning and the end of my loops um, so I now need to um, think how the loop will work and what I need to do to make it do what I want it to do um, and to do this we need to think how uh, this will work first I'm, I don't need this anymore so I'm, I'm uh, disabling this this is not gonna work now um, the second thing is to see how it works so I now have I equals 1 and equals 40 so with the first run it's epsilon over D equals 0 0.0001 and then it's gonna go with this value and do all the calculations have I from 1 to 41 or whatever the value that's gonna end up with uh, yeah it's gonna be 41 because I have any equals 40 and then it's gonna start a new loop with this value of epsilon over d. <coughs> so um, if if I do the run like this, uh, you would notice that it's gonna be 41 i equal equals 41 when it is done with epsilon over d equals 0 0.0001. And once it starts this 0 0.0002, it's gonna put the values of the uh, uh, the iterations or or the calculations. In, in the in the cell in the next or, or I mean the following cell so it's gonna be starting from cell 42 or 41 it's gonna do all these calculations till 80 and then from 80 to uh, or 81 to 100 is or 120 it's gonna do for this so I, you will have one column which is a huge column and this column contains all the values stacked uh, after each other each other and in this case you'll not be able to to do the plotting uh, easily uh, or it's, it's gonna be painful so uh, there might be an easier way to do this which is creating a matrix a matrix that contains columns each column contains the values of epsilon over d for uh, or the friction factor for each epsilon over d so um, 
to do this I need to add a new counter which is gonna be I'll call it J start it like like this and when you start you'll have J equals 1 and instead of having this F of I because F of I means that you are filling one vector it's just one column one two three four um, but what I need to do is to move these to another column so it's gonna fill rows in one column so this is gonna be the row number and the column number is gonna be J so what I did here is I am telling MATLAB that when you do the run you would put the values of friction factor for this epsilon over D in this column that's called J okay um, and once it's done you should start with a new value of J that's why you have to put J equals J plus 1 here of course this this is part of the the outer loop not the inner loop because you need to keep the J constant for uh, for all the 40 values for this uh, for this run um, so I'm, I'm kinda uh, fixed this issue now uh, there are some issues that I'm not gonna talk about now I'm just uh, I'm gonna run the file and then see what are these issues and why did they happen and what can we do to solve them uh, and it's important for us to do the mistakes and to learn from them uh, because this is the the best way to learn is by doing mix mistakes um, and also I want to uh, do the plotting here so I don't want to plot here I want to get every line plotted um, after it is done uh, calculating or it's, it's already calculated so what I'm gonna do is to take this um, from here put it here so it's gonna it's gonna semi log x uh, it's gonna plot on the semi log plot uh, Reynolds plot versus f and this f is actually uh, the, the 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 whole column uh, or the the whole matrix. I, I don't want to plot the whole matrix. I wanted to plot the all the rows for the column J. Okay. So so by doing this, I'm asking MATLAB to plot only the last column that it put uh, or it was filling in in this inner loop. Um, and um, you, you still can do the line with. Uh, or um, anything that you want to put of course uh, putting a color is not going to be good now my lab will put colors by itself so you don't need to worry about it um, because if you put a color here it's going to be the same color for all the lines so it's going to be uh, uh, kind of confusing so it's it's better to leave it for my lab to take care of it so um, before you do the run you can you can test it by your your eyes you just see what my lab will do so you can say I have here I equals 1 J equals 1 and now this is epsilon over D for the first loop in the outer loop it's gonna start with this value of epsilon over D it's gonna do all the calculations put it in column number uh, row number one column number one and then with the next run for the inner loop it's gonna be row number two for column number one and it's gonna keep going for this and and then it's gonna plot go back and do all, all the work so it it seems to me like it is uh, good but there is one issue here is that when you do the plot uh, you want to make sure that the the plot will not remove the older plot so you have to hold the plot and you need to keep it on because if you do not put on then it's gonna be uh, on and then in the next loop it's gonna be off uh, so you'll delete the 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 plot so let's let's run it and see what we got so it's kind of doing what we want to do but there is one issue here which is something that is is not good so the, the the way the plots look is is what we expect to have it lines like this like it uh, this is the way it's it's uh, drawn on the uh, on the moody diagram uh, we, we can before before fixing this we can add the legend because uh, it's gonna be uh, oops I'm sorry because it's gonna be confusing now uh, because we have a lot of lot of a lot of lines so the first one will be epsilon over D equals zero point zero 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 one and then I'll, I'll just take this and uh, make copy, copies of it uh, so the first is 0.001 the second is 0.002 then 4 then 6 then 8 and then 0 0.002 so when we uh, oops when we run the file now 
um, we have the legend here. And it, uh, bef before looking at this error, we see that the the epsilon over d of 0.02 is here, and then it's going all the way down to the 0 0.0001. So this is what I'm expecting, and we we can we can check the values later. But I need to understand why the plot have uh, does it have all these lines. I I, I shouldn't see these lines from from zero to this value and to understand this let's see uh, what is the f this is what i'm expecting and you'd see that the f looks fine for the first column you have here all the 40 values nice and then it's starting the the values in the next column from the following row which is from row 41 and then from 81 for the third and from 121 for the fourth and from 161 from the fifth and so on so there seems like the 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 row number is is not right something is not right about the row number which is i actually um, and if you look at i you'll see that i equals one it starts for for the first uh, loop for the inner loop it's starting from with one ending with 40 and or, or 41 and starts the next one for this the first the first inner loop for the value of epsilon over d uh, starts with 41 it's not starting with one uh, so it's it's filling 41 and all whatever is above 41 is zeros because you didn't give it a value to put there so you can simply fix it by putting this here um, this is all what you need to do just put it here and everything now is fixed just think about it you, you're done with this loop and start the next loop you were starting with 1 not with 41 so when I do the run now um, oops you see that the problem is solved and everything looks very nice and clean um, let's compare the values here to what we have here of course this this is different different because this is kind of squeezed more than this or this is uh, stretched stretch more than this but let's look at any one let's put, look at 0 0.0008 this green line at 10 power 5 it's giving 0 0.020 uh, I'll say 22 21 something like this <coughs> let's see 0 0.008 at 10 power 5 <coughs> um, so it's giving something like 0 0.022 so it's exactly the same value that we're getting from here so using using the for loops i was able to do all the work uh, for not only one line but four or five you can do it for all the lines in the um, in the moody diagram so it's um, it's a pretty uh, nice way to do all the uh, the work by just doing some edits to the the code and it's important for you to put yourself in matlab's shoes and see how he's gonna think and what issues he's gonna face and how you can solve these issues uh, because this is the best way to do the work uh, for with the loops uh, without, without uh, getting confused or doing a lot of uh, mistakes um, so i hope hope it helps and i'll see you in the next video goodbye